Hey, what's up? Today, your first Ethereum app with Python, Infura, and Web3. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to infura.io and create an account. Once you do, you'll get to this dashboard. And what we're going to do is create a new project. I'll call this one YouTube project. And we can take a look at our project. And what's important here is the keys. We need these keys. So we have our project ID, our project secret, and an endpoint, kind of like an example of how to, how to use it. Cool. So now that we have our project set up, we have our project ID, let's get our app configured. I went ahead and created a project called Python Ethereum. And what we're going to do is create a virtual environment for this project. Virtual env. Cool. So now that we have that, we are going to activate our virtual environment. And we're going to move into our Python Ethereum project. You can see I already created a little app for us as well as a requirements.txt file. Uh, so we can run that. For me, it's all satisfied, good to go. Cool, so now let's open up our app. So I already did most of the work for you guys. We have a URL where we're gonna enter our API key and I have a test address, which is like a contract. The first thing that we're gonna do is go to our project ID. And we're going to take that and we're going to throw that into our URL. You might notice that I have two different URLs and there is a reason for that. One is on mainnet and one is on rinkby, if that's how that's pronounced. And what rinkby is, is that is a test environment. So we could take our address. This is just a random address I'm going to use. And we can go to etherscan and take a look at it. So in rinkby, this is our address, right? And we have a balance here. We have some transactions, whatever. And for this exact same contract uh, on the main website, we have obviously different balance, different transactions, because these are kind of two different environments going on that you can use. And so RinkBee is the test environment. So when we come back to our app, let's just use the test uh, URL to get it started. And what we want to do is take our test address and throw that into our get balance method. And what we're going to do is get the balance from this contract, which we know to be one point whatever. So what does that look like? Python three app.py. And here we are. I did a, uh, I printed out is connected true just to make sure our app is connected. Now that we're good, we can kind of remove that and our balance is that 1.000 whatever 232 that we can see here and we could we could do something so if we wanted to use the main url as you know that's pointing here instead and we'd kind of expect to get a balance of zero so we'll run that we'll get our balance of zero and flip it back one more time and we'll get our balance of one point Sweet, we are getting the balance of our very first contract. And there you have it, your first Ethereum app. Now let's take this example a little bit further. We're gonna try something else. And you'll see a really common example is to do get block uh, latest. And then you can just print out, or let's call this latest block. And we're gonna print that out. We don't need this stuff. So we're going to print this out and I'm going to expect this to not work. And I'll tell you why. Yeah. So this did not work. We got a validation error, 97 bytes, but should be 32. You can read about it. And what I found out was this will happen with certain operations. And what you need to do is insert this middleware that I currently have uh, commented out. So we import, uh, our middleware and then we're going to inject it and we're going to try that exact same command one more time and boom we get all our data and I guess this is the first time you guys are seeing this so this is a block this is the latest block the uh, block number is here and there's a whole lot more information so here's an introduction to blocks and from here you can you can take it anywhere